Well, your words never meant a damn thing to me. Say what you say and I see what I see. Cracking the road to you is like a canyon to me. Can we finally agree to disagree? Can we finally agree to disagree? Hey! Well, you're crying cause I'm laughing and I'm trying not to laugh. I'm living in the future while you're clinging to the past. I wanna let go, you wanna make it last. You're not enough for me and I'm all that you have. You're not enough for me and I'm all that you have. So Well, your words never meant a damn thing to me. Say what you say, and I see what I see. A crack in the road to you is like a canyon to me. Can we finally agree to disagree? Can we finally agree to disagree? Hey, welcome back to Coffee Break with Candace. I'm so excited to be here today with my special guest. First, let me say thank you to Space for these incredible digs. For our, This is our new location for filming. So my guest today is a singer-songwriter here in Austin, Texas. Pretty incredible, as you've just witnessed from his uh, song... We did hey, right? Yeah, hey. 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 So it was so good. And I feel like I would just like him to serenade me the rest of the afternoon, but I know he's got other stuff to do. So please help me welcome my very special guest, Ray Prim. Welcome to the show, Ray. Hello. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's so good to have I don't know why, but you make me laugh. You are so funny. I don't understand why. I'm being serious. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure you are. <laughs> So, did you grow up in a family where you guys were like comedians and made each other laugh all the time? Not at all. I, I was the oldest of um, three kids, so mm -hmm. um, I was I grew up jealous. Did you? Uh, what I, did I, 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 you know, for being the only <laughs> child for six years, and then a kid comes over and takes your spotlight. I guess I was trying to amuse my friends and my and my parents as mm -hmm. much as I could, but no, they just put me aside. I began. I went from being a child to being mm -hmm. a, a, a caregiver. No, what a care, caretaker. Uh huh. Babysitting. Rocking them to sleep, go do this, go do that. <laughs> so, I guess I'm just making up for lost time. Okay. Well, see, I'm not that funny, and I'm actually the oldest of three as well. You are funny. No, not like you. Like, you're laugh out loud. I'm kind of that smile, like, mm -hmm. But you're like, <laughs> you said, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but you're like, you know, the big belly laugh from deep down. So I, I never thought about it. I guess, you know what, I kind of think I am funny. Mm -hmm. Just go on with it. <laughs> I'm hilarious. It's, it's, you are hilarious. Oh, so, so how I got into music is yeah. I went to a Depeche Mode concert. Depeche Mode? Like, for real? Mm -hmm. I've made, made an electronic album to, to live that up, but that's a whole other story, too. I'm all over the place. I'll tell you right now. You got yeah. to reel me in. But, so. I mean, here's my thing, is I, which I think Depeche Mode is cool, but, I mean, that's such an interesting... Yeah. Yeah. Have they influenced your music at all? Mm, not anymore. Okay. But they, at the time, I mean, my first thing was like, so I went to that Depeche Mode concert and I was like, you know what? This is cool. I had these little Casio mm -hmm. keyboards and my, I had two Casio keyboards and my upstairs neighbor, I would make her come downstairs and I would write something on these little, you know, mm -hmm. ding, 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 you know, and then she would, I was like, you need to play that part. And so she'd play and, I, and I'd be singing and she finally got sick of me. Mm -hmm. She's like, listen, I can't be coming down here. Every time you want to write a song, you need to get a band. Wow. So I said, okay. And so her boyfriend played guitar, and he came over. And I realized something. I realized that I had a, um, you could say gift. I had a gift. Like, if you play something, a chord or something, mm -hmm. and play it, if you, if it, I can make a melody. Yeah. So I yeah. learned that I can make melodies that 
that were that people would like cling on to. So I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna start doing that. And then I realized that I could write lyrics that that didn't that weren't terrible, that weren't awful, mm -hmm. that people could relate to. And so I was like, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this band. That was that was when I was 27. So I started music when I was 27. Wow. Yeah, I'm That's 32 really cool. now. Uh -huh. I know. I mean, and man, what a career <laughs> you've had in that short amount of time. So, like, where do you draw your inspiration from? TV. I know it got dead sound did it, but yeah. I'm telling the truth. TV. TV and other people's experiences, like, mm -hmm. because I was like, I tried to write about my life, but I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I grew up like the, the Cosby's. Mm -hmm. My dad had money. We had a nice lifehood. So what I'll do is, um, and, and I'm not the, I found out that I'm not the only one that does this. A lot of people mm -hmm. that do this, um, but like I'll see a, like a movie scene, and it, it doesn't take much. It's not like I'm like writing mm -hmm. about the whole movie, but um, if a scene moves me, and I, I like to watch TV a lot of times with my guitar in my hand, and I'll just be messing with it. Mm -hmm. And if a scene moves me, then I'll just okay, oh man, I'm gonna write about this. And I just tap into it. And I think I think that's it's kinda like when almost to the extent where, you know, when an actor takes on a movie, mm -hmm. sure. they don't they, they don't necessarily have their they never had their arm legs cut off when they're doing what's called. Yeah. But they'll tap into that. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So that's what Absolutely. I do. I just tap into what it would be like, what it feels like. And it's just from emotions that I would feel. Now, there are some songs that are really, really personal, mm -hmm. but to me when I sing them, you can tell. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm on a single, I was like, okay, I go to work at 7 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. My girl's great. I can sing about my dog tearing on my couch. Mm -hmm. But how many times? Well, Let's talk time. about Penny a little bit because I've seen your Facebook. And Penny Penny's is, famous. Yeah, Penny gets into some, some situations. You know what's funny is that um, first it was Chi-Chi. Mm -hmm. Like the dog, like the first, really? everybody used to love Chi-Chi. Uh -huh. Because Chi-Chi, when we got him as a puppy, I, had to, I, I wrote a blog. And it was called Puppy Diaries. Oh my gosh, that's and so And people cool. wanted me to um, turn it into a book because um, mm -hmm. it, that was funny. I, I don't know why my pain was funny, mm -hmm. but... <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, that's like, that, that was funny. And then, so we, it's, it's like the yeah. puppy became, and then when Chi Chi grew up, he kind of got out of it. Then we got another puppy, and then Penny's the new one. Uh -huh. She's like Chi Chi on crack. This girl, she's been here before. It's like, mm -hmm. she's crazy. Is she? She's crazy, but she's good. And please don't, please don't hit me up and tell me about Creighton. I don't want to hear no about, more about no Creighton. The dog's is two years old. That's prison. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, like, and it's not, it's not like, let's say I crater. I crater for a little bit, right? And then she'll go five months in the crate and nothing. You gotta test them sometimes, yeah. right? Yeah, and then yeah. I'll test her. She'll go. Eat, she went. She went. Before she ate up the couch, she went seven months without an incident. How am I supposed to predict? That's and she's true. gonna go crazy too one day. I you know agree. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. She just agree. snapped. Who knows why she snapped? <laughs> but she snapped. Oh and, my gosh, and, poor Penny. Poor Penny, she poor me. She... That's what I'm like, poor Penny. <laughs> Penny gets two meals a day. She sits on the couch. She watches dog whispers. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. She doesn't do anything. <laughs> stop playing my stop, poor Penny. It's poor me. <laughs> Has there ever been a time where you where you thought maybe you would give up music like it wasn't worth it? Yesterday. All this? Okay. No, I'm just okay. Like, no, 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 that does happen. Uh -huh. me, me and my friend Tamini, who's a great songwriter, mm -hmm. and um, he started in life li even later trying to do all this. And so, yeah. you know, he wants he wants to get to a certain point, but like I was like, you know, man, you don't understand. It's like, if you come to these shows now and you see, you, you know, I'm struggling, but you see, but you know how long it took me to get there? Just like 12, 13 years. Yeah. And you've only been doing this for like maybe two or three years. So yeah. you got to stick strong. And he's such a great song. It's like you just got to yeah. stick with it, man. And sometimes he gets down and sometimes, but I, but, you know, I, I talk to him sometimes like, you know, you think you want to, it's hard. I, I try, so we're going we're gonna to keep, we're going to be real, right? So this is how I look at it. It's like, you think to yourself, you know what, I'm good enough to play anywhere. Yeah, you know that's absolutely. that's what that's what you you got to feel that absolutely. way, right? Absolutely. But at the same time, are you? Because if you were, like, if you really were that good, then you would have. I mean, this what, what would stop you? I mean, what what, mm -hmm. what? So sometimes I think I'm not as good as I think I am, but I'm not as bad as I think I'm not. You know, like because mm -hmm. I'm I'm my worst critic on my mm -hmm. own self. So it's just hard. I, I, mm -hmm. You gotta, you know what? Enough of that. 
So that's why I've got a I've got the, I've got this manager who helps us out now. Mm-hmm. She's also like a, a in my corner, Tina. She's always saying, "No, you don't think like that and all this stuff." So I and I agree. It I, happens. I mean, yeah. You know. But no one can be a better you than you. No. And, and I so, feel like I'm on Oprah. You got me about to cry. So, <laughs> but I'm but I'm serious about that, and I think it's so. Like God has given everyone a unique voice, yeah. and, and I I hear so many incredible singers. I think you're an incredible singer. And what I think to myself is how great it is all these sounds in the world, these different styles. Yeah. I think it's amazing. Yeah, I do too. I, think, I do too. And, that, and that, just yeah. that point is like you know because you could be sitting in your your room, and these songs never see the day. I mean, a- light of day. Absolutely. And just to go out and play, and then and then to get to go out and play, it's a blessing. I mean, to get. Go out and play, and then play on a Saturday night. Yeah, absolutely. You know, on a choice night. Yeah. So, but I, but I did put it. You know, I did put in the time. So I want to back to put in twelve yeah. years. You know so. what really helped helped me save me this year too. Mm-hmm. Going into this year is uh, an organization called Black Fred. You heard of yeah. yeah. Black Fred really hit, really re energized me too because mm-hmm. I mean they they brought me up, had me play for a show. And, uh, Tell us about the what Black, Black Okay, Fred. so Black Fred, what they do is it's called BlackFred.org. They pick musicians. Um, they pick 20 musicians, mm-hmm. right? And they um, they donate money. Well, they give a grant at the end of the year. So oh, throughout awesome. the year, they have listening sessions. And out of the mm-hmm. 20, 20 musicians, 10 will get a, a big grant for like $15,000 mm-hmm. or $12,000. Wow, that's and awesome. And then the other 10 will get a grant of $5,000. Mm-hmm. And you put it towards a record or whatever you need to do. And so... Play in front of their, play in front of their um, organization. I, in the first one I played, I guess, in front of like 150 people. And then we played the Spider House, and I think it was 100 and some people. And um, they just help you out. They, they, they help you out. They got, and then they have um, mentors um, that help you with, like, I talked to one mentor. He helped me with mixing, like oh, panning, awesome. mixing. Uh-huh. George Reef. Um, mm-hmm. You ever heard of George I Reef? I have, actually. Yeah, yeah, he's one of the mentors. And I, I got to go to his house. And oh he, my he showed me like mixing and uh-huh. panning and all stuff. Uh-huh. Stuff that you normally wouldn't like, advice you couldn't get, you have to pay for. You know? Absolutely. But he showed me before he got sick, he, I was going to keep coming back, but you know, now he's dealing with his health and he needs to take care of that, so I know, understand. So when he gets healthy and everything, he's back on his feet. I'm definitely going to go back over there. But he teaches you. and um, So they got all these mentors about, they, they got people to help you with radio, mm-hmm. they have people to help you with um, marketing. Oh, awesome. People to help you with. Um, all kind of stuff, mm-hmm. and then at the end of the year, you play the Paramount. Oh my gosh, that's amazing! Yeah, yeah that's wow. one of my bucket lists. Uh-huh. They play, play the would, Paramount. Yeah, I would love so to do that. So it's called called Black Fred Ball. But uh-huh. they've been they and they've helped a lot of musicians out, and they just I think it's I just think it's marvelous. Like when you go play one of their shows, they they it's like silent. They're there. They're people who appreciate music. I've done side things for uh-huh. them for members that want me to play their mm-hmm. party, whatever. And it's just amazing. I think it's I, I think yeah. it's absolutely amazing. But that comes from putting in the work. You you've done the work. Yeah. And then those opportunities come. Yeah. They don't all come at one time, but they come at the right moment. And it's so, just when you don't think you're when you think yeah. that you're not on anybody's radar. I was on their radio. Radio. Mm-hmm. I was on their radar last year. Yeah. I was like, how did I get on your radar? It's yeah. like it's but like that's what we've so been awesome. hearing. So. so tell me what you have next. What's coming up next for you? Okay. So October thirteenth, I'll be playing at the at the Windflow. With our Mexican chocolate, um, it's an intimate show. Um, it only holds about forty something, forty eight seats, I think. Um, and it'd be just me and acoustic guitar, like what you saw with Jen K. Nice. But it'd be Mexican chocolate instead. Mm-hmm. And it's real intimate. It's like last three shows we've sold out, and um, people tend to enjoy it. It's like you get a three course meal, and then we come in and play at the end, and we'll play like an hour and twenty minutes or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it's just I, I like playing shows like that where you can like sit back and you don't have to sing hard over stuff. You can just do little soft things over what you call it. Whatever. And I play songs that you normally wouldn't hear with the band. Yeah, sure. So I try to do that. Play songs that you wouldn't hear with the band. And then um, the 14th and 15th I play at uh, in Dripping Springs at a songwriter festival. And then Saturday, November 19th I play at Strange Blue Lounge side with a full band. Nice. So That's fantastic. It's going to be a fun year. Uh, so a couple more things and, and thank you for being here but thank you. but one question I like to ask all of my guests what is your favorite word and why? Oh my favorite word? Mm-hmm. I should look up these questions. Mm-hmm. You know I don't really I don't know I don't have a favorite that's a good question it what? is isn't it yeah I don't know <laughs> man you just stumped me I've never been stumped mm-hmm. in an interview <laughs> You know, I never thought about that. Like, really? What's your favorite word? My depends on the day, but a lot of times awesome because I feel like 
you know, no matter how hard things are, there's always something you can find in life that's I can I can tell you what I love this to, like it's not one word, okay. but it's two words. Okay. Who this? Who this? I will say that no matter how many times you call mm -hmm. me, I don't care who it is, my mama call me, mm -hmm. I don't care who it is. Uh -huh. We could just, you could tell me right now I'm about to call you. I answer, who this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but why, what's your, what's your thing with that? Because I never know. Uh -huh. you can be <laughs> what if you get kidnapped? Okay, and the and the, and the kidnappers call me. I'm like, mm -hmm. and they say we want three thousand dollars for camp. Who this? Wait, a minute. first of all, I'm just worth three thousand. I'm just saying. I don't know. <laughs> no, can we? Can <laughs> three million. Three okay, million. Okay, we, want, we want three okay. million. But I mean, they know they're gonna get three million out of me. <laughs> but can we aim high? Like, okay, yeah, okay. like ten thousand dollars. I mean, you gotta want to be. You gotta. She's gotta put out. This is. I think this is what kidnappers mess up. Uh -huh. <laughs> You gotta make it reasonable. Oh my god! Because you know, ain't nobody gonna spend no three million dollars. So okay, let's. The for Taylor Swift, they would. Now she, mm -mm. yeah, they would for three million. They would for her. Don't you don't think? Y'all rest his son, Michael Jackson. He they would three million for him. You don't think? Well, who they asking? I'm just like, who you saying? That's like, if you call me up and tell me you got Michael Jackson, I'm like, keep him. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, help us all. Okay. <laughs> now, $3,000, I could probably do a kickstart yeah. and get you. <laughs> I'm like, is she comfortable? I'm like, I'll call you back in a month. <laughs> Get on my Kickstarter and get oh it up. Oh my gosh. If you if they call me for a million dollars, you <laughs> stuck. Okay, I'm just saying. You best to get comfortable because you ain't getting oh no money gosh. out of me. I can probably raise oh three thousand dollars and put uh -huh. fifty on it. Uh -huh. But I'm just saying, <laughs> if you you want to get free, you want to stay there. Okay. So okay. So Kickstarter, I can get you out in a month. Okay, then. But that's <laughs> if that's I don't reach my goal. Uh -huh. <laughs> Keep up. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm that's just, so awesome. So that's why I say who this. But I just love okay, the, okay. I love the way it gets on people's nerves. Really? And then the last thing that we like to do is that I have a, a larger cartoon version of me that I love everybody to sign because I just want to fill it up with artist names. Mm. So because I enjoy doing this show and you guys are amazing. So, oh, yeah. yes, candy. yes, and we call her lovingly candy, affectionately. Candy. Yes, candy girl? So if you would sign candy, um, again, I'm having all my artists sign, and we're gonna fill this up. Okay, so what I'm about to do, people like when I sign, it's like it, it's very disappointing, but this is all that I have. <laughs> That's it? That's okay. it. Okay. Well, we thank you for that because that's Ray Prim. We know that's Ray Prim. That's what I signed. Yeah. Like when you go to IBM, that's what you see every day. Really? I sign for everything at IBM. Wow. Okay. So, that's it. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for being on the show. It was thank very, you. very entertaining. Thank oh, my you gosh. Having. You it was all the awesome. questions. I know I got to talk to you. Well, you, you probably, uh, you know, developed your own during the course of this interview, <laughs> but it was delightful and we had a ball. We enjoyed having you.